Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today, Sridhar Chityalaji is joining me and we are going to talk about the Russian economy over the last 20, 30 years. After all, the data doesn't lie and the data has a story to tell us. Welcome Sridharji to our special segment on the Russian market and the Russian economy. Namaskar. Namaskar. Good morning. Good day to everybody. Um, you know, very excited to be here for the short show. Sir, um, you can, I mean, this is going to be a very short session viewers. So please like this program so that it will get viral. You want to know the data. You want to know the truth. And, and this is the truth, absolute truth, because numbers don't lie. Sridharji, take it away, sir. Where do you want to begin? So let's kind of look at the last uh, 40 years or 50 years of the economic data of uh, Russia. Uh, there's a very important story here. If you take a look at uh, the graph that we're going to put up, you know, the economy has grown from about $550 billion in 1988 to about $1.7 trillion as we speak today. Uh, but the most important is it is, uh, you know, if one studies the Indian GDP, uh, there's a very striking similarity. You can see the, the, the crest and trough driven by the political, local political uh, environment and some of the decisions that Russia has made. Even it touched 2.3 trillion in 2011-2012, 2.2 2 trillion, or 2. Uh, yeah, 2.2 to 2.3 trillion, and then you saw the the sudden. This is the Crimea situation in the 2014 to 2016, when stri stringent sanctions were imposed and the uh, the consequence that one saw. That's the key message from here. It has stabilized itself. Uh, more on the back of uh, three areas, um, primary energy, second is commodity, and third is uh, minerals and metals. So um, I'll move on to the next slide, Sridharji. I think this is yeah. uh, very straightforward. So sanctions will have a big, big effect on the GDP of Russia. And uh, the sanctions of the, the new set of sanctions we'll only see in the months and uh, years to come. So that's probably going to you know, how far do you think it's going to go? One trillion, below one trillion? Just a back of the envelope cal calculation. Right now, the estimate is somewhere between three and four uh, percent reduction in GDP for 2022 20, uh, as a result of uh, as a result of the sanctions. Whether it could stretch to six percent remains to be seen. We can actually, in one of the another, in probably another show, we can show the graph as we are collecting the data by sector, what the consequence of, of the sanctions impact is. I mean, you impose sanctions, you don't get benefit, you don't see the activity tomorrow, but you see the activity uh, in the in the outer kind of quarters and years. Right, right. So shall I go to the next slide, sir? Yeah, next slide. So the structure of uh, the Russian economy is divided into three, agriculture, manufacturing, and services. If one studies the uh, Indian economic model, you can see pretty much similar, the percentages vary. Um, the manufacturing is where you have consistent uh, between 30% to 32%, but safely assume it is uh, 30%, and uh, agriculture has remained around 4%, reflecting that this is very much a controlled economy and then the services sector, which is uh, makes up around 53 to 56%, depending on which year you are looking at. Now, whenever there's an impact, that is the reason why when sanctions are applied, it affects both the services sector, it also affects the manufacturing sector. When we actually show you the outlay of the impact of the sanctions, you will begin to see why it stretches across the entire segment of the US economy, barring the agro sector, the agro sector, what I'm talking about here is people who produce uh, the exports part of it, part of it goes into uh, into part of it goes into the services and part of it stays within the agriculture. So, again, this, this represents uh, symmetricity and therefore the sanctions impact will be felt across the two important areas, services and manufacturing. And so, sir, let's take a look at the next slide, which is the EU trade and by various product groups. I think this is probably the most important slide for today's talk. Sir, please uh, go ahead. So this is, the, this is the basis of Russia's battle with Europe and the adjacent nations. What is the message here? The message here is there is a bright orange 
and the light shaded area in the 2011 box. When you take a look at the 2011 box, the you will see that um, the it is 148 plus 5.3, close to 153 billion dollars represented energy and chemicals. That is the number in 2000. Um, um, uh, 2011. Yeah. yeah, this is EU. EU trade with Russia by product group. So let me set the context. EU was importing close to 193 billion dollars in total from Russia, of which 153 billion dollars represented the energy segment of the imports. Now you come to 2021. When you come to 2021, okay, the exports has contracted and the imports has contracted, but the contraction of the imports is the significant number. Now, if you take a look at the, again, the two uh, brightly and lightly orange boxes, 99 to 99 plus 6.8 billion, 105. So from $153 billion of energy imports the exports as the imports has reduced to about 105 this is where russia is trying to battle and russia is trying to make sure that it is not going to shrink further because this is the fundamental driver of its economy so the battle for ukraine is not merely about all these other things that one is talking about which is you know, uh, neo-Nazification, cleansing, nuclear, uh, you know, sovereignty, etc. This is about the numbers. This is about the fundamental economic aspect of Russia. $50 billion of reduction and contraction in energy imports is a significant number, especially when Russia has laid all the kind of infrastructure around this specific area. It is absolutely, it is fearful that uh, should uh, shale and other importers come in its economic driver is under threat so this is what he is trying to control as we speak notwithstanding the rhetoric of mr putin he has conceded that to his friendly european partners he will receive the oil energy payments in euros, not in ruble, Gazprom Bank will receive it in, uh, in euros and then convert it into rubles and send it to the central bank. So this is the significance of the, the economic imperative is what is driving the issue. It's not in this chart. US, uh, Russia exports 42 metric tons of wheat. Ukraine exports 24 metric tons of wheat. So between the two of them, they are almost 40% of the world exports. So there is also that significant factor. So this is not about anything else. From my perspective as a banker, the economics is driving this whole war here. Thank you very much, Sridharji. And that was a very, very data-driven look at what is happening in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And uh, let's hope that people who really need to know these numbers can make up their fact. I mean, the facts are there to see. Uh, this is this is the reason why Russia invaded Ukraine. Of course, the results are not going to be what they may have expected. And also remember that India plans to jack up its exports from wherever it is now to 21 billion, sir, billion dollars worth. 21 metric tons of uh, metric wheat, tons, wheat exports. Yeah. 21 metric, metric tons of wheat. And, and that would be a huge jump up for in, uh, India as an exporter. It, of course, needs to have the land to put, you know, make, create that. And, and maybe it is stored in the go-downs in FCI. We don't know, but we will wait and see. This is a huge opportunity. Let's wait and see how this plays out. Thank you very much, Sridharji, and Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.